After the meeting, trustees or the students held a meeting to decide on further action. The students are taking a lesson from history and building a shanty town on the UVM green. About 20 in that shanty town in mid-afternoon on the green, they were singing protest songs from the 60s and 70s as they worked. The protesters say they are disgusted with the refusal of the trustees to divest more than $4 million from firms doing business in South Africa. They say some students will stay at Shantytown in shifts as long as it takes to force the trustees to divest. The Shantytown is apparently symbolic of the black townships in racially torn South Africa. And supposed to educate people on the physical conditions and also on the political and economic situation. We hope people will stop by so we can give them literature, they can ask questions. And so it's a kind of a central point for people to find out about what's going on in South Africa and in terms of U.S. foreign policy and in terms of UVM and, and, and divestment. University officials have said the students can stay in their shanty town just so long as they don't make a mess. University of Vermont students angry over their school's refusal to divest itself of companies doing business in South Africa blocked administrative offices today, forcing security officials to make seven arrests. Michael Gilhooley reports. UVM officials were taken by surprise this morning as a group of student protesters blocked entrance to a number of key offices, including the president's. The students are angry at President Laddie Coor because he voted against divestiture within six months. Coor supports divestiture within two years. We hope President Coor will begin voting on the Board of Trustees as a representative of the university, which he is. He's here to serve the university, the staff, the faculty, and the students, not to dictate it. Dean of Students Keith Miser quickly advised the protesters that debate on the divestiture issue is allowed, illegal activity is not. You're also violating the university dissent and disruption policy, and you'll also be subject to uh, possibly the university discipline action. But the students refused to move, and officials were forced to call in security officers to restore order. Did you understand what I said? I understood. Will you move out of the door? No. You are under arrest for disorderly conduct. Most of the students moved, but seven did not. They dropped to the floor and forced security officers to remove them from the building. For the third time in two months, apartheid protesters blocked the president's door at UVM. Security police were called in and 11 people were arrested. But as Linda Scherzer reports, there was a twist to today's arrest. Round three in what has become a familiar scene inside the Waterman building. As early as seven this morning, students and faculty filed into the building, blockading the president's door. Once again, the call rang out for divestment. We are taking an initiative. We are going beyond legitimate means because they aren't working. But the issue today had as much to do with dissent as it did with divestment. Faculty members, including Justin Joffe, who was born in South Africa, questioning UVM's right to make arrests. And if your intention is to block this doorway, you're infringing upon those rights and freedoms of others. Can I ask you a question? Yeah. Who is the university? I'm a faculty member. You're not speaking on my behalf. Whose behalf are you speaking on? Who is the university? Administrators were hard-pressed to answer that question, instead pointing to university policy, which allows free expression, but not disobedience. Tend to make arrests if you do not remove yourself away from the doors. Where's Lanny? Where's Lanny? President Coor never showed up, at least not during the demonstration. According to one student, the president passed them on his way out of the office earlier this morning. He uh, was willing to meet with the students uh, in a setting other than blocking the, the doorway. Uh, and we approached the students and asked them if they were willing to do that, and they were not. Instead, they waited until security carried them out. Eleven people were arrested, among them three faculty members. You know South African stocks have got to go. Trustees! We have know. brought President Coor and the trustees to this position. After the rally for divestment, about 75 protesters marched down to the Howard Bank, hoping to speak with Bank President Harry Mitigee. Mitigee is UVM's trustee chairman and has voted twice against full divestment. Mitigee, however, was out of town, but students with money in the bank stood in line to close their accounts, protesting Mitigee and his view against divestment. President Corr is feeling the heat on this issue, to put it mildly, and it now appears he's feeling pressure from all sides to resolve this controversy. 
which could happen next month if trustees approve his latest plan. The trustees have considered the issue of divestment from South Africa. Such a plan had been rejected twice at previous board meetings, and some trustees were losing their patience. The resolution being considered calls for the university to sell off all its holdings in South Africa within 18 months, and it quickly became clear that the months of student demonstrations at UVM had had the desired effect. Some of the trustees said they were changing their vote to bring peace to the campus. I have determined that it is for many reasons, both financial and otherwise, that we divest and get on with the business of operating this university. In the end, the Rules trustees voted 12 to 7 to adopt the divestment resolution. We may not have changed the hearts of some of the trustees, but um, we definitely changed their vote. <laughs>